Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm Dr. Cindy Russell, Executive Director for Physicians for Safe Technology, and I'm here to give you a brief overview of the health effects of wireless technology. I'm a Stanford-trained physician, and I've studied environmental toxins through our local county medical association and the California Medical Association for over 25 years. I've worked on pesticides, flame retardants, bisphenol A, fracking chemicals, and other toxic exposures that affect our health. Most recently, I've been working on wireless technology. We're using more and more wireless devices, thus we're increasingly exposed to microwave radio frequency radiation, which surrounds us now on all sides. Physicians are becoming more concerned about the health effects of this technology, and in the last two years, I've spoken at three physician conferences for continuing medical education on the health effects of wireless technology. How did I become interested in this topic? Well, when I learned of a proposal to place a cell tower in my daughter's school 10 years ago, I dove into the research, and I found out there were valid health concerns, and it was not such a good idea to put a cell tower in a school setting. <clears throat> what I also learned was that wireless radiation passes through our bodies and all organisms. Wireless radiation is absorbed by anything that contains water, and we're 70% water. Note, you can't cook dry rice in a microwave oven. Wireless radiation can interfere with our cellular biological processes that are not heat-related. And also, we get exposed to a mix of artificial pulsed electromagnetic radiation frequencies at the same time. And this is very similar to the mix of chemical toxins that we're regularly exposed to, and we cannot hear, see, or taste. And we're also electrical beings. Our brain, heart, nervous system, and endocrine system work through tiny electrical impulses that affect our molecules and membranes. It makes sense that electromagnetic radiation could harm us. There are seven decades of military and scientific studies that indicate wireless technology is biologically active and acts as an environmental and human toxin. And the effects are variable and they're nonlinear. There are differences in our genetics, our nutrition, toxic exposures that produce differences in how our bodies and our biology react to these wireless exposures. Is there a biologic mechanism of harm, people ask? Well, yes, it's oxidation. And the mechanism of toxicity of wireless frequencies is similar to that of many chemical toxins we're exposed to, including ionizing radiation. It is oxidation. 261 studies show that wireless radiation causes oxidative stress, which in turn causes inflammation. We know oxidative stress damages DNA, lipids, proteins, and membranes. Oxidative stress causes injury to nerve cells, heart cells, the immune system, the reproductive system, and the nervous system. Oxidative stress leads to inflammation and a host of chronic human diseases we commonly see now. There are both acute and long-term health effects. And acute effects occur shortly after exposure to a wireless device or a nearby cell tower. It's like an allergy. Those who are sensitive experience neurologic symptoms such as headaches, nausea, dizziness, irritability, memory loss, heart palpitations, insomnia, and fatigue. It's estimated that up to 30% of people are mildly electrosensitive, up to 5% of people have moderate symptoms and 0.65% of the population are unable to work or be around wireless devices at all. And that adds up to about 2 million Americans. We know occupational exposure to military radar, which is the same type of telecommunications we use now, causes these same neurologic symptoms. Firefighters developed many of these symptoms when cell towers were placed on or near their fire stations. And this led the International Association of Firefighters to develop a policy resolution in 2004 to successfully fight cell towers on fire stations. This is now codified in two California telecom bills, AB 57 and AB 537, that exempt fire stations from having cell towers due to health effects on firefighters. You may have heard about the Havana syndrome. There are reports of incapacitating neurologic symptoms that were experienced in American and Canadian government officials stationed in Cuba in 2016, as well as China in 2018. More recently, similar attacks have been reported in Austria and Arlington, Virginia. A National Academy of Sciences report in 2020 concluded the symptoms are due to pulsed microwave radiation. The U.S. civilians can get Havana syndrome too. This occurs when cell towers are placed close to homes or if someone is electrosensitive and near wireless devices. I'm working with a town back east fighting a cell tower place without proper notification. When the cell tower was turned on, 17 people living in the neighborhood near the cell tower developed the same neurologic symptoms. People are now moving out and deciding to sell their homes if they can. The long-term effects of a toxin, be it wireless technology or chemicals, occurs over time because the biologic damage is cumulative. 
Studies show that wireless radiation is associated with cancer, reproductive failure, including miscarriage, neurologic harm such as ADHD, cognitive decline, and memory impairment. Dr. Lee, a Kaiser physician and researcher, studied 913 pregnant women and measured everyday exposures to electromagnetic radiation. And they found a threefold increase in miscarriage in the highest tier of everyday exposures. It was an excellent study and without anyone refuting the results of the, or the methodology. A review of eight of 10 studies showed that neurobehavioral symptoms or cancer occurred in populations living in distances less than 500 meters or about 1,640 feet from cell tower base stations. A 10-year study of the third largest city in Brazil by the health department showed that within 1,600 feet of a cell tower, the rate of cancer increased by up to 17-fold, and those power density readings were well within the FCC guidelines. Edgar looked at a town in Bavaria and published his findings that showed a three-fold increase in malignancies if you lived five years near a cell tower that was within 400 meters or about 1,200 feet. Mayo in 2018 published his research examining the changes in neurologic function of students in two schools that had adjacent cell towers. One tower had five times higher power density, but all within the FCC guidelines. He showed significant cognitive decline in the students near the higher powered cell tower after two years. Wildlife and insects are even more sensitive than we are and also adversely affected by cell towers. The FCC standards are outdated. They're based on short-term thermal heating, not on long-term biological effects. The FCC is being sued for its failure to reevaluate the health effects of wireless radio frequency radiation. We're still in a large experiment. We want to reap the benefits of technology while preserving human health and environmental health and well-being. Let's take precautions. Thank you.